Oh, what's this? Well, this is the Google Pixel 2 XL. And this is a pretty big deal because this is the only smartphone in the world, apart from the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 1 and the Pixel 1 XL, that has both the software and the hardware made by the same company, apart from the iPhones that Apple makes, of course. And being such a unique phone, you know, you would expect it to be good. And spoiler, it's actually really good. And here is my end of review of the Pixel 2 XL after more than two weeks of use as my daily Android driver. So yeah, hope you all got those snacks ready to go and enjoy. Okay, so Google released two smartphones this year, the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL. Yes, having the two in their names means that this is the second generation Pixel smartphones. And same as last year, you get essentially two models. You get the regular one, and then you also get the XL model. And even though they have the exact same specs, the exact same camera, the real flagship is actually the XL, thanks to its 2017 design with very thin bezels, a larger six inch display versus five inches, and also a quad HD display versus 1080p display on the smaller Pixel 2. So the Pixel 2 XL is Google's flagship smartphone for 2017. And there's actually a lot of really good parts about this phone and a few bad ones as well, but let's start with what's good. Okay, so by far the best part about having a Pixel phone are the updates. So yes, with a Pixel phone, you get updates day one, which if you haven't used an Apple device before, you won't really appreciate how convenient this is. This is really, really convenient, getting updates the second they are released. I mean, just a few days ago, I actually got an update to Android 8.1 Oreo, which, I mean, this is crazy considering that my Samsung Galaxy S8 is still on Android 7.0. Like, what? Come on, Samsung. 7.0 when 8.1 is already out. Come on, Samsung. Come on, DJ Co. Come on. Give us, give us the updates. So updates on day one is great. And then Google promises software support for the next two years, which is, you know, it's really good. Still not as many years as you would get from an iPhone, which is four years, sometimes even five years in some cases, but it's definitely by far the best, uh, the best update cycle on any Android device. And then you have the performance number two. So the Pixel 2 XL comes with the Snapdragon 835 processor and four gigabytes of RAM. And since this is pure stock Android, it's incredibly fast. It's uh, smooth, it's fluid. It's, I've actually had zero performance issues with this phone. Essentially, a Pixel phone is the equivalent of an iPhone running Android because you get updates day one, you get great customer support, which you can actually access from the Pixel settings menu, by the way, and great overall performance. So this is an overall very, very good experience with a Pixel 2 and a Pixel 2 XL, and even a Pixel 1 and the Pixel 1 XL. And then also something great about a Pixel is the camera. So this camera is hands down the best camera on any smartphone right now. It's the best camera for daytime shots, the best smartphone camera for low light shots, and also the best camera for uh, stabilization in video, and then also the best smartphone camera for taking selfies, and then also the best smartphone camera for taking portrait mode selfies. Now, apart from this, the dynamic range on this phone is just, wow, take a look at these shots. <laughs> This is just out of this world. The image processing is top notch on the Pixel 2. And honestly, the reason why this camera is so, so good is thanks to Google's image processing. So Google is the company with the best machine learning in the world. You've probably known this already. And they actually applied all this to all aspects of the Pixel 2's camera, even in outside apps such as, you know, the Google Photos app. This one can actually tell you, uh, tell the difference between different pet faces, so different, different animal faces. <laughs> So you can actually tell the difference between my two pugs, which is outstanding. No other company can do that, not even Apple. So this is honestly the best part about the Pixel 2's camera is this image processing. And the only part at which the camera on the Pixel 2 isn't the best one right now is when it comes to video recording. So the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 can both do 4K video recording at 60 frames per second, and then also slow motion in 1080p at 240 frames per second. But yeah, other than that, the Pixel 2's camera is better in every single way. So outstanding camera, great performance, overall a perfect package for people who want an iPhone, you know, for the Android world. So something that just works and it does so really, really well. Now let's talk about the not so good parts. Okay, so first off we have the design. So I'm not saying that the design is bad. Yes, the Pixel 2's design, you know, the regular model is bad for 2017. I mean, come on, take a look at those bezels. It looks like an old iPhone 4. 
but even the Pixel 2 XL doesn't look that great when you compare it to phones such as the Samsung Galaxy S8, for example, or the Note 8. You get significantly larger top and bottom bezels. I'll get to why in a second. And then you also get those side bezels, which are quite noticeable all the time, since for some reason Google decided to curve the glass, but not the display panel itself. So this is a very interesting design choice. I really wish that they curved the display as well, similar to what Samsung did with the S8. But if you compare the Pixel 2 XL with the original Pixel XL, well, the improvements in terms of the design are definitely noticeable. So not only do we get significantly thinner top and bottom bezels, but yes, the side ones are thinner and we're also getting a 6 inch display versus a 5.5 inch display. So in terms of the design, the Pixel, the original Pixel uh, XL looked like, I don't know, 2013 phone and this one looks like a 20, I don't know, mid 2016 maybe. Now, in case you're curious, the reason why Google decided to go with those fairly thick top and bottom bezels is because of the speakers. So you actually get dual front zero speakers, which actually sound great. However, once you max out the volume, uh, the sound actually gets distorted quite a bit. So this is very noticeable, but overall great speakers, I would say. I wasn't really blown away by the sound. Uh, they're good, but they're not, you know, amazing. And then the headphone jack, speaking of uh, sound quality, has been removed. Now, I'm actually 100% okay with this because this is the future, but what I'm not okay with is the fact that you get no headphones inside a box. So you do get a 3.5 millimeter to USB Type-C adapter, a headphone jack adapter, but you do not get any actual headphones. And then considering that this is almost as expensive as a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, Having no headphones in the box is a huge deal breaker for maybe some of you since you don't have, if you don't have a good pair of headphones, you'll have to buy them separately, which would obviously increase the price of this phone even more. On the back, however, the Pixel 2 XL looks much, much better. I would say that probably why this is probably the reason why Google only or mostly shows the back of these phones in almost all of their ads, not the front. This is quite interesting. Have you noticed that, by the way? Now, mine's the black model, but if you get the white one, you get this panda or this stormtrooper-like feel with black and white. And then you also get a very different colored uh, side button, which looks very, very nice. So I would say that if you're going for a Pixel 2 XL or even a Pixel 2, definitely get a white model, it looks really, really nice. Now, speaking of the side buttons, uh, both the power and the volume buttons are on the right-hand side, which will take some time I'm getting used to. This is a bit, you know, strange to have on a smartphone, uh, but a fingerprint reader is right in the middle on the back, which works really, really fast, by the way, so that's great. Now, apart from the design, the second thing that's not so great about a Pixel 2 and a Pixel 2 XL would be the display. So. Here's the thing, when Google launched this phone, Google opted for a more for more realistic looking colors on the display. So essentially the color profile was very, very dull. Colors were washed out and almost every single reviewer said that the display was horrible because of that. However, since then, Google has actually released two major updates for this display. And the newest one adds a vibrant color profile, which makes the display just as saturated as the one on the Galaxy S8. So overall, it's a very, very good display. It's Honestly, it's not a bad display, but there is a color shift towards blue, which is really noticeable when you compare this thing to something like a Samsung Galaxy S8 or an iPhone 10. And keep in mind that this display is actually manufactured by LG, so the one on the Pixel 2 XL. The one on the Pixel 2 is manufactured by Samsung, same as the display on the S8, obviously, and the display on the iPhone 10. Those are also manufactured by Samsung. And yeah, pretty much Samsung's displays are... Uh, well, better than LG's, at least when it comes to smartphone display panels. Uh, when it comes to TVs, the story is quite a bit different. But that's the thing, this isn't, honestly, it's not a bad display. If the iPhone 10 gets a 10 for its display quality, this is a solid 8.8 .8 to 9. So it's a pretty good display. Now, something else that's worth mentioning is the fact that the Pixel 2 actually comes with water resistance now, which the Pixel 1 uh, didn't come with. So IP67, IP67 rating, essentially the same rating as on the iPhone 10. However, what it doesn't come with is wireless charging, at least not yet. Now, I never really cared about wireless charging that much, you know, until the iPhone started supporting it because Apple was so, so many years behind when it came to, when it came to wireless charging. I mean, so many Android uh, phones had it for years. And now, since Apple has it as well, I don't know, it kind of feels like every single smartphone should have it just because, you know, Apple that was so late to the party finally has it. And speaking of charging, the Pixel 2 does support quick charging but it's not really that quick. So I did a fast charging speed test and the Pixel 2 XL charged from 0% to 100% in more than two hours, uh, two hours and 20 minutes, I believe, versus one hour and 30 minutes on the OnePlus 5T or one hour and 33 minutes on the S8. So fast charging isn't the fastest on the Pixel 2. And then finally, let's talk about the customizability. So 
here's the thing, compared to iOS, Android was always all about customizability, being able to, you know, change pretty much everything. But with a Pixel 2, you're not getting that many options at all. So for example, the Google search bar is now on the bottom, so it's, you know, easier to reach, but you cannot remove it, or you cannot even change the positioning, which is very, very annoying. And then you cannot also, you cannot hide the navigation bar, for example, when you wish, like you can on the Galaxy S8 or the OnePlus 5T. And then you don't get custom gestures like on the OnePlus 5T or a dark mode like on the OnePlus 5T. And you get all of these features on some other smartphones like the OnePlus 5T, for example. And then, yes, the Pixel 2 does have an always on display, but you cannot customize it. On the S8, you can, you know, I always pick the calendar on the S8. So you have it there. It's really, really useful. Uh, with a, with a Pixel 2, you're essentially stuck just with, you know, this clock interface. And that's it. Now, you can always change the launcher to, for example, Nova Prime if you wish. But isn't the whole point of having a Pixel phone the fact that you don't need to install a custom launcher? Because Google Stock 1 is so, so good. And it's good, don't get me wrong, the launcher is really good. But it's just that it has zero customizability, which I personally really care about a lot. And then finally, we have the price. So this is not a cheap phone. The Pixel 2 XL starts at £800 in the UK, which is more expensive than the Galaxy S8 Plus. Now, uh, an exception to this is the holiday season, because for the holiday season, the Pixel 2 XL, for example, is discounted, so it's now £750, which is even cheaper than the S8 Plus. So that's good, but it's still a really expensive phone. So as a conclusion, is the Pixel 2 XL a good device? Is it worth it? Well, you are getting the best camera on pretty much any Android smartphone, even the best smartphone camera overall for 2017, which is, you know, pretty good to have on a phone, obviously. Uh, and then you're also getting a clean stock Android experience from, you know, from day one and with day one updates. And here's the thing, if you don't care about having the best design on a smartphone or the best display on a smartphone, you're probably going to be extremely happy with the camera and the performance. And oh, I never even talked about the battery life. I did a battery drain test, by the way, which in case you haven't seen, the link for that is in the description. But the Pixel 2 XL, spoiler, won by a long shot when compared to the iPhone 10, the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, uh, the OnePlus 5T, which also has a really good battery life, but the Pixel 2 XL won by a mile. So definitely check out this video, but overall the battery life on the Pixel 2 XL at least is amazing as well. So I don't think there's anything negative or anything really bad to say about this phone. Even the display and the design, they're not that bad at all. They're, you know, they're good. It's just that they're not the best ones out there on a smartphone today. But the camera and the performance and the battery life definitely are. Well, not the actual, you know, numbers when it comes to performance, not a raw performance, but a fluidity, pretty much the best one you can get in an Android phone. But yeah, there you go. This was my in-depth review of the Pixel 2 XL. If you to subscribe if you want to see more unbiased in-depth tech reviews like this one, hopefully was. Also, the notifications by tapping on the bell icon so that you get notified as soon as a brand new video comes out. And let me know in the comments, what do you personally think about the Pixel 2 XL? Would you switch to this from something like an iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy phone? Let me know in the comments if you would do that and why, probably the performance and you know, the fact that you can store, by the way, unlimited photos in the cloud with this one. I haven't talked about that, but that's also a really cool feature. Uh, at full resolution, by the way, in Google Photos, that's really useful. But yeah, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this phone. If you're to give this like, if you have enjoyed it, this has been pretty much it. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. So, no tech, signing out. Cheers.